And we're live. Welcome once again to Quest and Quill. Sorry it's been so long that we've been gone. Life is hectic sometimes. But we're back, and that's the most important part. Because where we last left off, the party journeyed into the Serpent Mountains that lie between the frontier and Baygate. There, in the, in the small past town, they encountered a group of bandits ready to rob them only to discover that these were in fact the very children that the party came seeking, holding them up with nothing more than pieces of sticks and old scrap metal fashioned to look like guns. So they returned, uniting Ali with her siblings to the town where they found the saloon. And asking a couple questions around, they found that there had indeed been strange occurrences happening in this small little quaint hamlet and many people had left so staying the night they journeyed once again to a dark tunnel in the mountainside where they encountered similar black slate marble structure on it they found in this excavation site three circles almost like large dials on the ground and so John had the idea to intelligently put three members of the party, himself, Havel, and Lula, on three circles, where they found their consciousness being pulled away into the center of this triangle, being pulled away into something deeper, being swirled as if being whirlpooled around and down into something deeper, darker. Lula was able to pull herself out, though she was greatly wounded and uh, greatly uh, wearied and struck unconscious. Havel similarly was able to pull himself out after John helped him with a slight push from his psychic energy. But now the party lie pushed up, uh, <clears throat> lie separated on each side of this large cavern. Lula is unconscious on the floor. Havel is unconscious on the floor. John has just pushed him off. And now something starts to move silently at first. Strange shape, amorphous and horrific. It's as if the stone itself has taken life from the center of the circle. You guys start to notice some sort of shifting liquid blob. We can switch to the battle map. I will put each of you where you are. I think Havel was. That's the old one. Where's the new one? Do we have a new one? Havel was there on that one, off which he's just been pushed. John, taken the furthest. Lula, the north. Saul and Aslan. You guys can place yourself wherever you'd like, closer to the entrance. The area. You guys notice something shifting. I would like 
whoever wants to to roll a passive perception roll. And I think we'll go along with initiative, unless anybody would like to do anything else. You want a passive perception roll or a perception roll? Perception roll, active perception roll. Okay. What unless you your passive perception is even higher, I doubt you will have seen this. Okay, I got a 20. 20? Mm-hmm. Anybody get any higher than that? I got 21. Yes, I got an 8. <laughs> then the only thing that you guys notice is <clears throat> what appears to be liquid stone Thank you for shifting and taking form and making its way towards Havel. Can I toss my axe at it? Indeed you can. Please make an attack roll with disadvantage, because you can't actually see what's going on. Even with my dark vision? Doesn't seem to be about the light. Alright. Even with the disadvantage, it's a 22. <laughs> 22. That's a hit. And nice. as you hit, you notice this viscous form split and suddenly take shape in front of you. What you guys notice seems to be a huge, sickly gray Good Lord. puddle, some strange malignant ooze. Hmm. And, and he looks like he looks like he's made of the same black marble as the structure. Seems to be made of some sort of it's almost like liquefied stone. Nice. Uh, the size seems a bit excessive, no? Try to say you're scared, Diego? I am. I doubt Aslan yeah. is, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did okay, my action. Are you rolling your damage? Oh, I, all right, I guess. There's, there's that, I suppose. So if nobody else wants to do anything else, we'll, we'll go in initiative order. It's uh, 10 damage. Yes, I... Sir. Ten. No, I can. Can I do a vicious mockery? Sorry. Can I do a vicious mockery? Do you have a good one? Uh, oh wait, you're unconscious. You can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, you're unconscious. You're currently <laughs> laying on the floor, and it's coming at you, quick, buddy. I'm unconscious. Uh, well, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Did it do anything? Like the... I used the new axes you gave me. I don't know much about their property. Except you told me they're plus one, I think. Then uh, if you use the new axe, thank you for specifying that. It strikes into it, almost digging itself into the stone. As I said, the viscous gray fluid sort of splits apart like bad custard. And the axe, after striking into the ground, a second later, and returns back to you like a boomerang. Oof. I pick it up like I'm surprised, or as it does. Like, oh, okay. Let's try this two more times. And he's gonna toss this one and the other one at the same time. <laughs> uh, you can do that on your turn. Oh. Uh, what was initiative order? Sorry, guys. I, I, I got don't... all up on my initiative. Did, is someone gonna put it up? I'm a nine, by the way. I'm uh, 22, which is why I assumed I was first. You usually are. That's that's generally the rule. <laughs> John also got a nine. He has fourteen decks. Does he go before or after? I think you can uh, go first. So, uh, so, so, what do you get? Uh, I got an eleven total. 
Okay. So then it's John Saul. Uh, Asking he go ahead of me. I got nine as well. And DM, What's you're going that? last. So it's John and then Saul. No. Saul has. Oh no! Yeah, John then Saul. Sorry. Wait, then what's your has, what's your dex? Huh? What's your dexterity on uh, Pavel? No, 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 it doesn't matter. I could elect you to go ahead of me. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter, guys. It's just ahead of me. And what's uh, the DM? DM Nine. is last. DM is last. <laughs> DMs. Uh, we we could force it to go last because. Usually ties on initiative, the players usually go ahead of the DM. Alright, I put the uh, initiatives up. Can I elect Havel to go before John? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh no, sorry, go, you go ahead of me. Sorry. sorry. I keep... I'm sorry, guys. Alright, once again, I'll change this. <laughs> Saul, and then okay. John, and then Havel. Yes. Okay. Uh, it, now that the creature took shape, am I still swinging at it with disadvantage? No, you are now swinging at it as if it was there in front of you, and you can see its gelatinous, stony form. Very cool. I think I have just about enough movement that I can ill-advisedly pounce on it. I can run 45 meters up to here. I don't know, 45 feet or whatever, and I'm going to rage as I draw my two battle axes and jump on this thing. Good. Using instinctive pounce to close the gap <laughs> for the last 15 meters. Nice. Um, so my first attack rolls for a 26. Definitely a hit. Don't forget damage and the uh, thing at the same time. Right, 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 right. Uh, so nine damage. The second one hits for 10. So I'm guessing that's a miss. Ten, ten hits. Really? Okay. That's uh, so nine plus seven damage, sixteen damage so far. As he sinks these two battle axes into it, and he's gonna go for one more swing with his right arm. Do it, which bro. It's for an extra ten damage. Twenty-six total. So that's a total of. 26. Plus the 10 from before, 36 total. That's a big turn. Good job. Cool. Better than that. And that's, uh, that's the end of the turn. I, I'm i not sure exactly what's the structure of the creature, so I'm going to assume he's just hitting it from the ground. Just like hacking at it. As you start striking it, where it did before been like slithering across the ground, it now sort of wells up, almost like a wave. And while still being amorphous, it seems to be a shifting slop, sloppy goo. Okay. That's my turn. All right. For Saul's Saul turn, and then John. He is going to advance, uh, trying to place himself between the creature and... Lula. He's gonna move 45 feet. And um, he's going to use a bonus action to do the um, the key shots. And uh, okay. for, the first, for the first attack, he's going to do seven points of damage. And for the second attack, he is going to use um, Um, it's it's a it's a Kinsa ability. It allows me to add one d six to one of my attacks. Um, it's a depth strike. Um, 
I'm going to critically hit it for a total of 40 damage. Oh, 40 damage. Yes. That's a big turn. That's my turn. Wow. That means, John, you're up. All right. Uh, seeing what's happening, uh, John will, will gasp at the sight of the creature, and he'll shout out, What is this? Some kind of elemental? Um, and then he looks over to Havel, and is the creature like still approaching him, or did it turn and, and face Aslan? It's amorphous figure seems to be now welling up to face Aslan. Oh. In that case, he'll just, uh... Oh. I'm sorry? It's, it's hard to tell. Doesn't exactly have a face. Yeah, but you said it rose up like a wave, right? Is the wave facing, is facing Aslan, right? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, in that case, he's just gonna shout out, Euro top, and he's gonna beam it in the back. As John is one to do. Over. Yeah, a 23. Hits it for nine force, second shot. Hits with a 17 for uh, 11 force damage. So 20 total. Then, 20 total, that's uh, a nice one. Yeah, and then I guess uh, John will run laterally this way. Two, four, five, six. Stop here. A little bit closer to the to the wall of the of the chamber. And that's his turn. Havel next, who is unconscious. Havel. Yes. You can make me a constitution saving throw. Time check. I. Uh, okay. Through. So he says, oh no, I get a one. So that'll be a total of uh, three. Your mind, while escaping this whirlpool, is in shock for the darkness and uncontrolled rapids on which you felt your consciousness slipping down. And while you are physically pulled out of the of the, the the actual zone where this is happening to you, your mind still feels like you are rolling around and you are unable to regain consciousness. And I lay a small tiny part. Network. Sorry about that. Then it would be my turn. This creature, first of all, seeing the giant angry cat striking at it. Uh, can I just ask you, Diego, uh, which axes did you hit me with? The silvered ones? Yeah. The ones you I received. They, you notice they are corroding. They now have a minus one to all damage rolls. No. Forever? Forever. Your one that returns to your hand seems to be undamaged. <clears throat> well, those are the ones that I used to hit as well. Are they all the same? You only have one of those, don't you? Or oh, I no, thought I got two. two. No, he got oh, a okay. twin set. Well, then never mind. I thought I thought <laughs> you used different ones. That's why I specified the silvered ones. Uh, I don't. I don't actually know magic. if they're silvered. I get yeah, the magic ones. Yeah. Okay then. As Aslan is attacking, this creature reaches up and 
almost flippantly in its rage, a stream of this viscid, viscous fluid flies up like a limb and strikes out at Aslan. Missing. I'll dodge it. And then it tries again. I'll dodge that one too. With? With, with, with my uh, armor class. You can't, you can't beat it. Can your armor class beat a 21? Oh, damn it. I think not. You're supposed to say so. yes. <laughs> I don't have enough. I don't have enough D6s for this. What? <laughs> Piss off. This is why you say just say yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, I, I dodge it. <laughs> Uh, you take a total of 10, 22 acid damage. Okay. Um, your chain metal, chain mail armor. It's a uh, scale mail. With, with your scale mail armor, it's hit with this viscous fluid. Now has a permanent minus one to it. Any non-magical -magic weapons and armor that you are wearing that are made of metal are now damaged and have a minus one to them. They begin to corrode as this metal eats at the fibers in them. Oh, crap. Okay. The creature then seems to turn and, well, you can't see it, part of it almost twitches out at John. And John, I need you to make me a uh, intelligence saving throw, please. Okay. Sixteen. Sixteen, you make it. You feel a psychic force push against you as if something is trying to dominate your mind but you're quicker than that and you're able to pull it off of you before it, yeah. before it, this the psychic force can dominate you your own your own psychic abilities yep uh, the rest of the party might see John tense up and uh, freeze all of a sudden uh, facing the creature and he seems to be struggling against some kind of invisible force a vein welling up in his forehead. The creature moves towards Havel, continuing along its path. How far does it get? This far. It does not move out of Aslan's range. But it slides its entire form along, almost lashing out with its with its tin with its viscous body. And that's my turn, Aslan, you're up. I'll say as soon as uh, the acid started to corrode the armor, Aslan mm -hmm. just furiously just takes off the scale armor out of him and just like throws it away. And then he'll continue slashing at the creature, except this time he's going to do it recklessly. Okay. <laughs> Man mode. <laughs> All right, so that's his flurry of blows is gonna hit for a total of nine plus a critical. Nice, which is double dice, double dice. If the twenty-one damage plus nine, and then on the last hit, oops, so that's thirty already. Yeah, make it thirty. Uh, make it forty-four damage. Forty-four damage. That's a big turn, man. Yeah, he's mad. Yeah. He's just he took he threw his armor away. That's corroded. And he's just like da, da, da. three strikes, full force. 
He's furious. Yeah, I'm imagining like some of the some of the rivets in, in the in the scale are, like weak or whatever. Just tears tears it off. Yeah, he's just like judge, judge, judge. There's probably a few pieces as well still clinging onto him. Ting, 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 ting. As the shit runs across the floor. That's his turn. DMT. The creature DMT. does not seem to like that. Actually, can uh, I do are, one more thing on my turn? I would actually. Your bonus. So yeah, I'm... I would like to do my bonus action Daunting Roar. Okay. And the creature has to give me a DC 14 Wisdom Saving Throw. That's a fail. Okay. Then he is uh, frightened of me until the next yeah. turn. Until the end of my next turn, sorry. Okay. That's And that's it. Havel, you were unconscious, bro. Sorry. I, I don't hear another con check. Try to snap out. You've only, there's only been one turn. Oh, okay. I thought we were on the second Still turn. Still the first round. No, no, no. We're about to get there. Soul is going to... Now that he sees that Aslan is between the creature and Lula, he's going to use his 45 feet to get between the creature and Havel. Um, I have a big question for you. Um, big, do I get advantage for flanking? For being flanking with Aslan or not? Not because of the size and structure of this creature. It seems okay. that as you move into it, another part of its viscous form seems to just shift and notice you. Okay. That's a fair question. So, um, or not fair question it's a fair answer um i guess my next question is, is does a 13 hit it indeed it does oh thank god uh what about an 11 yes sir does a 10 hit it that's its ac okay great i didn't need the advantage after all all right i need to add this all together because i didn't think that would happen Um, opens with a shot with the rifle for 16 damage and then punches it for 7 damage and then does a flurry of blows for 9 and then 6 damage for 38 damage. Nice, that's a good turn. It helps when the AC is garbage. As you're getting close to it, may I ask you, there's nothing on your fists, you don't have any rings or cloth or anything like that? Uh, I think he does have, like, leather gloves. Like, probably fingerless leather gloves, at least around the trigger finger. Okay. They, um, are covered in this viscous liquid now. Anyway, that means, John, you're up. Pardon me, give me just one moment. I gotta do some measurements. Yes. Take your time as this creature. Yes. and starts to squelch towards and away from Aslan. Let's touch. Um, okay. John is gonna run 30 feet forward. Towards Havel. Actually, he'll, he'll run laterally. Mm -hmm. Two, four, five, six. Yeah. And then uh, he's just going to beam the creature again. And it's uh, what he assumes to be its back. Although it yeah. is a purpose in shape. So... Alright, first part of the beam. It's it with a 17. For six force damage. Second part. It's it with a 29 for 11 force damage for a grand total of 18 force. And Ooh, nice. um, I guess now he's within range of Havel and he will... He'll, he'll pull him five feet towards, towards himself. 
with his uh, telekinetic powers. Okay. As you do this, the creature's form seems to shift in response to the telekinesis. Oh, shit. Oh, that's his turn. Havel. Con check? Con check, please. Ooh, 21. 21. Your eyes flutter open, and a second later you're dragged across the floor by John's invisible energy, (laughs) and you wake up. You're on the floor. This creature is daunting over you, rising up above your companions. It seems to be a gray, amorphous, viscous, horrendous, smelly, rocky creature. And you're lying on the floor. Oh, I, I look up and I look at it. I was like, oh my God. Was it Burrito Thursday? But that's look like what, what happens after that. Uh, Do I have uh, to make a saving throw for your vicious mockery? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's an 18. Ah, jeez. Uh, I am prone. I get up. I wanted that to work. Uh, I'm assuming I'm prone, right? Yep. Yep. I am going to uh, get up and shift down 15 feet this way. And I don't think I have anything else right now. So that's all I got. Okay. That's a reasonable turn. Um, With that, it's me again, is it not? As the creature's entire form shifts. Keep in mind, you have the creature has disadvantage on all attacks and ability checks. So you you you've roared in front of this creature. This creature shifts and turns, and its figure daunts over you as it's completely immune to frightened conditions. Oh, shit. <laughs> and it strikes us. One at Aslan. <laughs> and one at Saul. In that case... Aslan, then... that's a hit. That's that's 20 plus. Did oh, wait, you... it gets advantage on you, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what Still, I was going to say. Yeah, I, I, rolled a, I rolled higher. I rolled an 18 on that one. Um, and that's a natural 20 on Saul. Ooh. Insta-kill. So Aslan... That's 21 damage on you. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, who's getting the instant instant kill? Saul? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We roll. Silver (laughs) bars. No, 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 no. We roll. Thank heavens. That's a miss. (laughs) That's allowed? (laughs) He just says something and then it happens? Yeah, Silvery Barbs allows me to do that. I have that too. Reroll, reroll against Aslan. What does this look like again? Yeah, what does it look like again? Uh, Silvery Barbs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Silvery Barbs, I just said, I see it and it sees like multiple uh, uh, pseudopods coming at it. I, I yell like, no! No! No, 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 no. And looks at me all inquisitive and like, huh? And misses Saul entirely. Yeah, the creature raises this big, this big long limb to smack down at Saul. And as it's coming down with the force of weight and hatred and malice upon him, it just like... And shifts to the ground, smashing into the rock around him. Aslan still takes 25 damage. Acid. Wait, I thought it was 21. Which... Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Is Did this I inflation? <laughs> <laughs> In this economy? Is that is Aslan raging? Does he take half that or no? Yeah. He takes half that, yeah. He's he's frothing at the mouth and I would say there's probably like acid corroding pieces of his fur, but he seems to not mm-hmm. completely be oblig- oblivious to it. And in response to this, Havel can I please have a strength saving throw? Uh, sorry, yes. Yeah, no, intelligence saving throw. Oh, is that all? As John pulls you from one side and you stand up and then suddenly 
you feel some force trying to tug at you. Uh, 14. 14? That saves. And as this force tries to pull you towards the creature, you're able to keep your feet and stay in place. You don't have to move. And I yell, I yell, fuck off. Fuck off. With that, I think that's my turnover. In that case, you can only guess what Aslan is going to do next. I imagine he's going to smack it. He's going to trip. Chop. He's going to triple reckless attack for eight plus ten, eighteen plus eight. 26 damage. That's a good turn still. Yeah, and that's his turn. I keep it simple like that. Not bad, not bad. For Saul's turn, sensing that perhaps fate was on his side and that things could have gone very, very badly, uh, will strike only two times unarmed strike for a total of 13 damage and then spend a key point to activate patient defense um, which acts as the dodge action um, which I believe imposes disadvantage on any attacks against him until uh, the ending of his next turn what's the damage on those unarmed strikes 13 damage not bad not bad Give me your maths in my head. That means, John, you're up. All right. Um, this John. Creature, yeah. This creature's form quivers in front of you all. Okay, um, yeah, John's gonna Eldritch Blast it. <laughs> so, anyway. so anyway, I started blasting. All right, both beams hit. Ooh, that's a big damage for a total of 28. Nice, that's a big turn. Yeah. Um... Then he's going to proceed. Now that he sees that Havel is, is up and running, he's going to up and run to the right. Okay, just show me where. And then Havel, I, I believe know. you're up. If that's your turn. Two, three, four, five, six. To there. Havel, what are you doing? Um, I need that creature to give me a wisdom saving throw of 16, please. That saves, I'm sorry. I yell out, uh, I try to yell out something, but as I was running, I tripped. Two, three, four. Uh, you know what? I move out of here and I try to yell out something, <clears throat> but. I'm getting all groggy and it doesn't work. Just you made it. And that okay. will end my turn. All right, that's good to know. With the creature's turn going up, it will take the disengage action. And as it shifts, it's full movement away from you. It will. Sorry, I need to measure this up. Well, it's always hard to do movement for big creatures. Is that, is that a way? No, it's not. One, two, three, four. I think. Is it getting close to John? Because it's moving away from Aslan. Good. 
But as it does, it and its figure shifts towards John. And I need you to make me an intelligent saving throw, please. You lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought he used his action to disengage. Actually, yeah, he did. Cheater. Oh, thank God, because that was a nat one. <laughs> this is a bonus action ability. Oh. oh. All right. Dead. Yeah, he fails. <laughs> you take 13 fail. psychic damage as you feel this psychic presence loom over you and then crush you to the ground as you fall prone. Oh, shit. Okay. And that's the creature's turn. Well, Aslan can definitely run 15 feet, which he's going to do so. And as he runs up towards this creature, he's going to strike at him recklessly three times. Okay. That's... Seven plus... Oh, another critical. I take those. <clears throat> Seven Please plus. Describe. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hold on <laughs> go. As I already rolled mine, and I got a critical coming up too. Uh, well, seven plus whatever you're about to get next with a crit, which is. It's going to be four plus eight, twelve, sixteen, eighteen, so plus eighteen. Yeah, please, please just describe this vicious. Reign of fury that Aslan inflicts upon this gelatinous, amorphous creature. Well, he just like side sprinted 15 feet really quick with his two battle axes and he just went like, bah, bah! and as he slashed upwards vertically, like so much goop came out of this creature that it was there was no foundation for it to stand upon anymore. So then it just kind of collapsed in on itself and became yeah. slime on the floor. And like cornstarch uh, solution, as soon as it uh, it loses that thing, it just and seems to almost seep into the stone around it. Yeah. And since Azor has one more attack, he's going to do one more attack. Or uh, you can take you can take the attack against the ground. That's OK. 11 damage. You hit the stone for 11 damage. And that's his turn. Okay. The creature lies dead before you. And for a second there's stillness. But the cave seems ominous. And now tight around you in spite of its cavernous area. Um, you should have silence for a moment. <laughs> uh, Please continue. Pavel is going to run to John and uh, starts shaking him. And it's like, John, wake up. Time to get up. Do we get it? Huh? Yeah, John, you, 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 you're, you made the killing blow. I knew it. I'm a hero. Yes, he said you are. The, uh, as he climbs to his feet. Uh, I, so I, I have to go you. check on Lula. He's going to carefully... You're, uh, you're muted. Around. Am I muted? No, uh, Nick. Me. Oh, okay. Um, as you approach Lula, she seems to be breathing. The unconscious, as if in some sort of coma or trance. He's going to carefully pull her out without stepping into the circle. She's on the edge of the circle. She's she's outside of it. I, I, I kind of put it on the edge there because the square doesn't display it properly, but gotcha. she's okay. just outside of it, basically. All right. Just verify she's okay. And uh, I'd like to make an, if I can, I'd like to make an active perception rule for a sign of like any more of these creatures in the room. Okay.
That's what's uh, what's your roll then? 25 total. You notice that while the caves seem still and silent, there's shifting and almost an ominous presence watching you. Okay. It's just like a feeling he has. It's not really like it pinpointed in anywhere specific. Um, it's it's uh, these creatures blend into the stone, mm-hmm. as this creature that you just slain, as, as you saw it do. Right. So, well, you can see a fig, a form, a shape, like a. It's difficult to pinpoint on, and especially in the darkness against the walls. Mm-hmm. Did you roll it with disadvantage? Because you probably should have as well. What, for the perception? For the darkness, yeah. I mean, I got my lantern. Still, looking around with your lantern, mostly what you notice is shadows. But there is definitely, there are definitely things moving on the walls. Okay. Sometimes you'll see a rock or a stone, and then the lantern, like, glances back over it again. That Good. rock's not there anymore. Yeah, so they wasn't the only one. We should, uh... I don't know if you want to clear this room out. J- Jama would run over towards the center of the of the triangle, and he would look around and see if it created an opening or anything. If um, if activating the circles did, did more than just activate the defenses of this place. It would appear that the stone is unshifted, unchanged. Save for the splattering of this now gray, rocky liquid about across it. I'll uh, I'll cup my hands and pick up some of the slime. It tingles. It, it doesn't burn or anything. How long do you hold it for? Five. Tingle. Five seconds. Tingle. Tingle. Sting. Sting. Burn. <laughs> you take two acid damage. <laughs> I'll have it. <laughs> You're not raged anymore. I still got a turn after the battle is over. That's a solid minute. Yeah, you guys. A turn is not a minute, bro. <laughs> got turn six is, seconds. Six seconds. Oh, the round then. Well, well, the round is six seconds. Yeah, the round is six seconds. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I what I wanted to get as is can I use a, can I do a nature check on this substance? Um, I guess you can. Sure. Yeah. yeah okay. Go it. ahead, give me the roll. Uh six. You thought that uh liquid stone existed deep underground and and as far as you understand the stories that your elders tell it's uh it's usually like orange and glowy and explodes from the tops of mountains angrily got it all right then uh, as soon as it burns his hand he's gonna drop it uh dm um not sure if Lulu, Lulu and I, but I'll go back to and I look around base. Do I see any like carvings or or any type of scripture that is mentioned on it? Anything that uh, perhaps would have been, you know, script of any kind, any any runes or anything like that seems to have long been worn away, whether in the the archaeological dig of this place, you can see that there are indeed grooves of, uh, along the the stone, but they they're so long worn, and they they would never be intelligible. They seem to like uh, 
almost shift into the actual grooves between the stones. Uh, pressure for you. When we were standing in the circles, it, it was kind of like our minds were getting siphoned, right? Something like that. You felt your consciousnesses, your, your, your consciousnesses, conscious eye, or whatever you want to call them, being drawn away. Okay. Pulled away so to somewhere else, any, something else. Any particular direction? Downwards. Deep. What I thought. Into darkness. Into dark. So you're saying physically downwards, right? Like, to the, towards the center of the triangle? Physically downwards towards the center of the triangle. All right. Um, John would he would look around, uh, running his foot across the the floor in the center of the triangle, and he would say, "It looks like there's nothing here." But while we were standing in the circles, I feel it pulling us away, trying to drink our souls down under. He says, looking down at the ground. And he would say, I believe there's something underneath here. But I don't know if we can dig it. You guys think, shall we try? Shall we go get some more tools or something? Explosives, maybe? I, uh, I think that if we can't do anything right now, we should get out of here. The, gr the ground is pure stone, right? Yeah, what you so what I described last time, but just to refresh us because it has been too many weeks. You guys are standing on this black sort of basalt, um, you know, with these large bricks that is that are somewhat similar to the structure that you found before, um, with intricate stone carving that all seems to fit together perfectly in geo geometrical geometrical patterns, and the stone around it, like the grey that you can see on the map, has literally been cleared away. This thing is not just buried, but it seems to be buried in the stone of the mountain. So those, those brick, those brick stones are recessed with in the stone, right? Within the stone. It seems that the stone on top has been cleared away to reveal the area that you can see. Oh, oh okay, gotcha. Um, can I... Can I try to peel the brick away? The, the, the black basalt bricks? Yeah, like I wedge, I don't know, my battle axe into one of the gaps. I just try to like step on the axe to like leverage out the brick. There is no seam. The area where the seam is, the edge of your sharpened blade can't go between it. Well, I guess it's one last thing to try. He, he would uh, lower his glasses and say and whisper, you wrote tough. And, uh, Initially, a, a weak beam would uh, shoot out from his eyes, green and swirling with an inky black, and he would Eldritch Blast the ground. And uh, the beam would slowly grow over time as he tries to penetrate. Force damage. Force damage is pure magical energy, right? Yeah. It seems to hit the stone, scraping off flakes of dust and debris and the covering dolomite or whatever this mountain is made out of. And as your beam fades, you reveal the black basalt, perhaps slightly scorched from the magic, but um, otherwise cleaned and cleared.
Yeah, I guess that won't work. Um, a lot of ideas, uh, guys. I think I said something earlier about maybe leaving, going into the mines and recovering explosives if they had any. That might be the prudent thing to do. Well, let's not talk about it here since there's probably half a dozen more of these things. Right, and plus we're kind of a person short uh, looking at Lula being all unconscious and whatnot. Yeah, I think gonna... maybe a strategic <laughs> retreat is in order. Lula still hasn't come to not yet. John has uh, a frown cressing his brows. Uh, all right, then. Let's pull back to the town. Maybe someone will know where to find some, some powder kegs. Hmm. Mm. Maybe purchase them. Oh. Before we leave, um, maybe, uh, John, can you read this? And he'll point at the glyphs on the altars. Uh, are there glyphs? I, I thought Nick had said that they were faded and unreadable. Yeah, instead of glyphs, it's like if you if you've ever looked at old architecture, and uh, you see that the stone is like worn away. That's what you see. Oh, so there the hieroglyphs are just unreadable there, or there are no hieroglyphs. Actually, there's you know what? Grooves. There's grooves in the stone. All right. You know what? I, I want to try something. I'm going to take mm -hmm. a mage hand. I'm going to take my mage hand. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of the ooze. And I'm going to go to one of the glyphs and see if I could tr kind of like retrace the, the glyphs. See if I could like make it more noticeable or like re etch it in a way. No, you say that there are no glyphs. They're just uh, striations within the stone. Right? Yeah. Uh, you can take your mage hand and, like, run some of the viscous liquid through it. Yeah. It's like... Just, now it's like, full of viscous... Thing. Now it's full of viscous liquid. Does it look like a shape of something? Or a form or something? It looks like at one point there might have been something carved into the stone here. What you can say is hard to tell. Um, uh, I know this is probably a silly question, but I just have to be sure. The yeah. um, There's no sign of like the remains of this creature eating through the basalt, right? No, as you look around the walls and cast your magical lantern, what you do notice is small tunnels ceiling, the floors, the walls. It seems to me that this creature has, over time, carved itself a maze okay. of... So, I guess my question is, are the walls also made of this, like, same basalt material? The basalt seems to just be the structure that's uncovered beneath you. This dolomite mountain seems to be almost formed around it. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah. No, I got nothing. Yeah, I, I, I think um, Saul's idea of just getting, like, blowing up shit right now is, like, the most prudent thing, because I might have ideas as well. That's what we did with the last one. Hey, well, as you guys what, what, have been, as you guys have been looking around and examining this whole thing, what you do notice, and the more and more you look at the basalt, is slight glimmer, almost the same faint blue as the whole thing seems to just be slowly sending out little. Yeah, what? As this light, as this light seems to radiate outwards through the cracks and crevices. Well, 
Okay. Almost like a beacon of some sort. Yeah, it, it's in the center of this, uh, the, bas the basalt. Seems to start from the center and radiate outwards. Um, I... Well, hover over it. I'm trying Sorry. To I'll hover over it. Seems well, that this light seems to be some energy from within, almost reaching out. Well, that's weird. John would walk over and, and kneel to the ground, placing a hand to it, trying to get a read on, on what it is, or what type of a message or beacon it is, or how it feels, you know? It feel like a distress signal, or just like a, a communication link? As you feel it, almost like a splash underwater, it's just a psychic in, uh, wave of like a signal being sent out. What kind of signal? It's hard to tell. John would stand back up, uh, wiping his hands, and he would say, it seems like kind of message or a calling, but I'm not sure of what sort or where to or who to, but we've done something. So I don't know whether it's good or not. Should we just make camp outside, keep watch, see what happens? No. I think we, we grab Lula and we go back to town. Sure. So we should make sure that she's safe. And then perhaps we can ask around, see if we can get those powder kegs. So we can do an, or another number of this structure here. Because whatever it is, I don't think it's good. Clearly, the, the invaders are interested in it. And at the least, I, we should deny the enemy. Well, this this looks like the top of a pyramid structure, right? Maybe. I wonder if there's another silvery mirror within right. the, this describe one. Here. Describe again how you felt when you were standing on the circle. Well, it felt like my mind, soul, or being taken elsewhere, like right. water down a drain, this drain, he would point towards the, the center of the, the triangle. So didn't you feel, didn't you feel like the mirror that we broke last time was filled with like a thousand souls or something like that? Indeed. That's why I imagine that there's another one of, of those down there, trapped with thousands of souls screaming in agony. Mm -hmm. uh, glad we, got, we weren't taken in. Me too. Are we gonna get them out? We gotta break it. It's a shame we had to get explosives every time we come across one of these. Need. Well, worst case scenario, I'm sure I could ask around in Baygate. I know quite a few people. Could always uh, come back here if we need to. True enough. But uh, something to consider is that I imagine that when we break those mirrors, we're actually extinguishing the souls within forever. But maybe that's a better fate than a, an eternity of agony. Just something. Yeah. Uh, I go to John and I was like, I don't know what you, you three talking about the mirrors and whatnot. I, I, I wasn't there for the mirrors, right? No. <laughs> no. No, it's like, John, it seems like you're talking crazy talk, but after experiencing what I just experienced, you're right and I think we should 
destroy this. But in the other cave, what did you discover? We discovered a structure kind of like this one to be made of the same type of craft craftsmanship, the same type of black stone, uh, the seamless interlocking carvings. Uh, it was equally as durable, but uh, that one was in the shape of a pyramid. This one, if anything, a pyramid might be upside down, oddly enough. But uh, we we took a bunch of powder and we took it to the rock and we put a big hole in it and within there was some type of artifact a large mirror made of some kind of misty silver and as I touched it I sensed many consciousnesses like a hive mind suffering within so we decided to destroy it and that's what we did silencing those screams and now here seems to be something similar the uh, the invaders the those creatures that you've seen before the ones made of the blackened flesh with the tentacles they they seem to be interested in it drawn to it it was one of those flying ships with the the swirling orbs of psychic fire it was staying around it guarding it and once we destroyed it it seemed to have quelled their presence there so I'm hoping it's a good solution well then it looks like we know the task at hand uh, like Saul suggested perhaps we should retreat back into the city secure Luda at a safe spot and if you could get those paddle kegs, destroy whatever monstrosity is lying beneath here. And we should do it soon. Well, all right, then. Let's head out. Yes. Autobots transform and, and roll out. <laughs> Aslan, think you're able to carry Lula for us? Big guy? Okay. Are you okay? You look a little worse for wear. What happened to your armor? You look at the burnt out fern, corroded fur on his skin, and he'll say, Uh, took a hit. Better off without it anyway. Well, hold on. Maybe, maybe we can repair it if you want. He shrugs and uh, I guess he'll pick up like the bigger chunks that he dropped on the floor. <laughs> and then uh, he'll sling Lula over his shoulder. Alright, let's go. Saul, would you mind leading the way with the lantern? Sure. Thanks. We, were make we would make our way on out of there. You guys are able to retreat. You come out into the the mid morning sunshine. It hasn't been that long since you've been out in the since you went down into the tunnels. You guys arrived, you know, maybe nine, ten o'clock and now you leave an hour or two later. And though you feel worn and exhausted, this journey not been light on you. All right. Uh, what other businesses besides the saloon are there at, at in the town? It seems that there was pretty much the saloon and then a couple of people's little homesteads, hey? Okay. There, um, there was a hardware store, though as you approach it, it seems to be closed and it doesn't seem to have been open for some time. Nope. We, we came out of the store. We came out of the mines, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are there any, like, buildings up here around, like, the entrance that would be, like, the depot or, like, uh, some sort of, like, building for... There's a storage shed 
that uh, is mostly knocked over. <clears throat> There's the foundations of what could have at one point been like maybe an office or some sort of building, but it's the, only the foundation remains. It's either been lost to a storm or burnt down. And uh, there's an old police system with no more rope in it. Okay. Uh, just as a Hail Mary, could I do an investigation check for any sort of sign of anything? Go ahead. Okay. I hope I get a natural 20. If you get a natural 20, I'll be nice to you and give you something nice. <laughs> <laughs> but only then. Only, only then. way. Why? Only way. I guess if you get above a 15, I'll give you a definitive answer. How's that? Nah, I got a 9. This is nothing. <laughs> it was so close to a natural 20, though. It, like, bounced around 20, like, two times. Almost landed on it. I got there a appears to be the remains of a, an old mining company that is no more. It seems to have long gone defunct. There's a lot of dust and cobwebs. Does it have a name at least? Have a name of it? Written somewhere? Nothing that, uh, nothing that anyone found worth remembering. Okay. Um, no signs of uh, powder cakes or anything of combustible nature. Or TNT. Hmm. The scrap remains of wood that the buildings are built out of. Hmm. And. Pickaxes. What you guys? Yeah, you can find one worn head of a pickaxe. It seems to be on one side, literally a nub, and the other side uh, almost completely worn away. Wow. No, no wood inside. The wood uh, was taken and probably burnt in a fire. Honestly, I think a uh, past town is a little past its time. No resources in this place beyond the the little food drink from the saloon. I'm imagining. Worst case scenario, we can uh, go into Baygate, and I can go say hi to mom. All right. Have you? Uh, seems like your powers have gotten a little more potent. Yeah. Yeah, I've been becoming stronger. Sure. Did you ever? Um, Try what I said, think about trying to discern where it comes from or how it came about. What exactly? Well, it just seems to me that you have abilities similar to these things we've been facing. Can't help but feel like if you knew a little more about it, you might be able to do something more I mean I can read people's thoughts and I can sense mental energies and weird things like that but can't just pluck the truth out of thin air Saul it doesn't work like that it's not what I'm saying I'm just wondering if it'd be worth the uh, the risk you know you said those are there are mines trapped down there. They clearly don't like being down there. I just wonder if you could shepherd them, do something. No, must they're, be. they're trapped within the artifact. Sure, but you're not trapped. Yeah, but there's stone between us and the artifact. Yeah. I mean, you, you, the, you're suggesting I, I stand in the circle again and just let myself be taken? It's it's a bold move. It's a I heroic like the, move. I feel like the reward, the, the risks outweigh the reward from that one, Saul, to be honest. Yeah, and besides, yeah. I'm pretty sure, even with my powers, if I get siphoned into, into the mirror, I'm not getting out. You know what, so why, why, would, why, would why would I do that instead of us just destroying it? I feel like destroying it is the safer route. Sure, sure enough. It's just a suggestion. Uh, 
I'll give it some thought, but I wouldn't be too hopeful. I'm, I'm not hopeful. I'm just trying to come up with solutions here. Like I said, I'll think about it. But you I, guys return to the saloon. Oh, sorry. There you go. Uh, but I appreciate the input. You guys return to the saloon not long after lunchtime. Seems the chef hasn't been back into work. What about his helper? The saloon owner welcomes you guys back in, offers you a lunch of bread and cheese, and asks if you'll be staying again the night, but um, seems the whole town has gone rather quiet after the excitement of yesterday. Um, I go to the saloon owner, and it's like, um, by any chance, do you know if anybody around close enough here might have some of that uh, powder keg or the TNT? Austin? No. What Most of the mines around the town seem to have been artisanal mines, as they're so politely called today. What about the the pointy axes? Can't we use that? Oh, yeah. Couldn't even get came get into the seams, right? It's uh, power. Well, we we tried that last time within the tunnels. Couldn't make a scratch in the thing. Mm. Remember, we even had our, our gnomish companion and his flamethrower on it and as you struck it with your axes. I don't think a, a pickaxe would be fair much better alone. The the power of black powder, now that's of a different magnitude. I think if we get enough of it, we can uh, still do the same again. Where do we get it? Well, I imagine the closest place would be a bay gate at this point. Uh, Tenton is a little bit too hot right now for Kryn to be able to get, get us another load. But uh, in bay gate, I'm sure I could, we could uh, find a supplier there. Plenty of shops in that place. How but far uh, is we that? should probably. Well. It's not too far at this point. We could either go back to the train station and take a train into town, or we could uh, walk through the mountain pass the old way. Now the question is, should we take the mountain pass if we're looking to remain anonymous? Or do we take the train, which would be quicker, but uh, our enemies may know that we're coming. And we'll still, we'll still likely need to take the, the mountain pass back here anyways. Because I doubt they'll they'll allow us to board passenger train with a bunch of powder kegs. Well, if we, well, if we just relabel it as alcohol, maybe well, actually, they'll let it go. Well, actually, I'm more... I guess we could put the kegs in my bag. It's an option as well. I will say that now that I know how easy it is yeah. to kill people in a train, I'm less inclined to travel by it. Can we not talk about that? Hopefully we're never put in that type of situation again. Yeah, just... I mean, that that's my vote. I'm saying I'd prefer not to travel by train. So we walk there? Would it's John like know how, how long it takes? Uh, John's never been to the pass before. Okay. So, it, so John was... So, so, sorry, I, I said that very, very boldly. Maybe it's your character, you can decide. But there's no, no have... reason for anyone to have ever gone to the pass before, you get me? It's... Yeah. Uh, 
No, John yeah. definitely had never left gate, uh, Bay Gate until he became a warlock. Yeah. Um. So it's unlikely. Yeah. So John, John would go to the saloon owner and he would say, hey, uh, how long does it take to cross the pass? If we left now, do you think we would we would make it by nightfall? It's a two-day journey. Going down three days up. If you left now, you'd make Bay Gate on the third day. I need to step away for a second, guys. No worries. Hmm. Three day journey. Ah. That is that is uh, longer than I had hoped for. Maybe we should just take the train. How about walk there? Two day journey and train back. Three day journey. Sure, but we can do that. What about her? Uh, what about Lula? Yeah, she's still not awake, is she? Lula seems to be unconscious. I might just have to. I can carry yeah. her, but maybe they won't let her in the train. True. Why not? But also, it could be dangerous taking the pass with her like this. Maybe we just, maybe we give her a day to see if she awakens. Perhaps we should give priority to her for the mission. She is our friend after all. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're basically family at this point. Okay. I can easily say you've all been my longest friends. And yeah, he smiles to them. Does that include me, Miss Morello? Well, nearly. You're getting there, Havel. Hmm. I just smirk. It's like, well, it's like we know what we need to do. Um, uh, but, uh, DM, um, uh, Ali already left, right? With her siblings? No, they're, they're at uh, the house. They did not leave the town without you. So, you know what? Right? The leave. plan was for them to wait for you. Right. So, I think we leave Lula with Ali. And, I mean, we could take the train in, but uh, walk back with the power kegs. That's what my... you guys are also discounting is that uh, you guys got on at the last train station, which was before the pass, which was at Tunnel Town. You know, the next stop after Tunnel Town is Baygate. Okay. Hmm. I, yeah, I, I do. I do like the idea. Actually, we we could leave Lula with Al, with Ali. There's not much uh, hope for for any of us to to heal her. Kind of, she kind of is our healer, isn't she? Her doctor. But, but she she hates Ali. We don't have a choice, at so yeah, so, uh, we only got. So many arms and so many hands, and I know you could carry her and whatnot, but can't put her in harm's way while she can't defend herself. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I get. We. Yeah. Uh... Lula, I know Lula doesn't really like Ali, but. I don't think she'll she'll mind while she's still sleeping. And uh, 
I trust, I trust Allie. I trust Al. I'm sure she won't do anything foul with Lula. We're, we're helping her and her siblings after all. Mm-hmm. If anything, she needs us more than, than we need, than we need her. I beg to differ about that, Mr. Morello. Someone in this group needs her as much as she needs her as much as she needs us. Really? What makes you say that? Hmm. Mr. Morello, my days as a traveling entertainer, I've seen I'm much of a people watcher and I know when uh, the sun shines the butterflies flies the happy smiles the little love shape love shape uh, starry gaze of two people on the cliff or on the cusp of Jumping off said cliff into that deep, deep unknown chasm known as live. And I look straight at John. You know what? Maybe you're people watching a little bit too much. You're coming up with all sorts of stories in your head. Look, I know what you're getting at. And there's no time for romance right now. We're living on a razor's edge. I have other things to worry about. I'm not disagreeing with that, with that, John, but I believe that there's always a little bit of room for love. And Yeah, I I have concerns. Um, leaving Lula with someone who a week ago was trying to hang an old man. Like, I, I know you trust her, but I don't know. Maybe you should give her some gold first. Well, you know what? You know what, Saul? I should feel, I feel that I wanted to kill the man that was associated with the killing of my mother. Mm-hmm. But I have other people who vouch for that person says that I should trust that person and they vouch for that person so John is vouching for her I'm vouching for her can't say I'm I could speak um, as right, I see what you're saying but that's not really the same thing it is the because same because John's known me more than he's known Allie And the others here have known me longer than they've known Allie. And I've also demonstrated to multiple people. And I've only known John as an Ilula for what? Uh, what was it like the total days? About a week? Week and a half? DM? It's three weeks. Uh, it's been a little bit longer than that. It's been about three weeks, yeah. Okay, three weeks then. I only know them for a total of whole, three whole weeks. And yet, I'm here having a civil conversation with you, Saul. So, have a little faith. And if really Allie wanted to kill us or have evil intentions, we can. And we could inflict just as much... I'm not saying she has evil intentions. I'm saying that she doesn't have a vested interest in protecting Lula. Well, we're trying to give her and her siblings a new chance in life a new setting because what they have before is just that rocky pet that rocky outcropping that they had out there we could give a, a proper home with a proper bed with proper food well with a different purpose in life other than just trying to survive is that, trying to so, to thrive is that something so, that she's asked for even once i think that's my main sticking point is that everyone is kind of projecting what she wants. Well, and she's not she, disagreeing because it's been pretty favorable towards her so far. So then why 
I highly doubt she's going to be risking it, Saul. So, risking look, what? Look, I've look, I've read her mind. I've seen her heart, and believe me when I say that she's put that life of hers behind her. She had gotten into a situation out of desperation, trying to feed her her brothers and sisters. And now we've given her a different option, at a better life honest life one where her family <laughs> we've got her back and trust that she has ours remember how she was willing to, to go into the mines with us and what she the only to... was... I don't remember yeah, that she was actually quite insistent but uh, look if, if you don't trust her that's fine I, I understand you do have good reasons for it but if you want to Try and buy her loyalty with gold. By all means, do so. Just don't ask me to do it. Because she already has my trust. I'm pretty skint right now, as you well know. <laughs> Sorry, that was so in character for the soul. <laughs> that got me, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, even though, even though John is wearing shades, it, he makes it very obvious that he is rolling his eyes. Of course you are, <laughs> aren't you? As he begins to stick his hand inside his pocket. Uh, you hear the clinking of coins, and he, he pulls out a small pouch with it's a 15 funny. gold. It's, it's funny how that works. The most heroic person here, the most goodly person here with the most coin. I don't have the most coin. And if I do have the most coin, it's because I'm not buying equipment for myself. I'm just paying our tab everywhere we go. Hmm. And I thought I was the most heroic. Because you are. It's okay, I have other... Uh... Yeah, you're, you're heroic in different ways. Hmm. I, have, I, have, I have other ways to uh, ensure loyalty, so I'm just seeing that. Excuse me. Yeah, so he, he takes the pouch and uh, he chucks it into Saul's hand. Oh, I'm sorry. What's this for? Loyalty, apparently. For you oh, to, no. To, I'll, I'll, in, to I'll, in, I'll instill loyalty my own way. What? This was this was your idea, wasn't it? To give her some money to make sure I she changed, doesn't I do changed something my mind. Oh, goodness. This is why I'm not a married man. And then he goes and snatches the gold out of his hands. I moved the coin away. I was like, I think this is mine now. <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Saul's got the dexterity, bro. I'm not even gonna li like, unless you really want to roll against that. I think I think Saul's gonna snatch that away before you have a shot. <laughs> He's got the sleight of hand. He's got everything. You want to roll John for it? Definitely, Je John definitely would try and snatch, re-snatch it out of his hand uh, telekinetically. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So I, I would say, I would say. Nick, I'm going to miss at you something. Uh-oh. Sure. sure. Make uh, make the, Don't worry. the strength save, the strength saving throw for John's. Don't worry. Throw. You guys are all thinking one thing. I'm doing another thing. Make the, in the meantime, make the strength saving throw for John's telekinesis anyway. Does it need to be strength, right. or could I do sleight of hand, or dexterity, or anything like that? Or does it have to be strength? Well, the official let me, throw let me, the official let me strength. Let me it? message you this first. You can make an informed decision. And okay. DM, in, in the same token, I see. Do we? If we see all this, I would like to cast Maiden on a down low and see if I could snatch it. So, <laughs> I need. From you first, a stealth check on that on that spell. All right, cool. In your mid charms. What is but what is this? I don't see why not. Of snatching a, a bag of gold. 
You'd think you think I don't you think I don't give you guys enough gold. I'm I'm just trying to paint a picture here. We are in the saloon now. Yeah, we're standing in the saloon arguing, and, and then now there's a highway robbery had happening. And and, and where is yeah, Lula? Right. Is she just like on Lula a chair? Lula's been and laid down on one of the. She's been laid down in one of the beds, I think. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming she's laid down. We put her down in one of the the saloon beds in one of the rooms. Okay. We could also be arguing in in the room as well. I think that might make more sense since we're kind of like talking about a personal <laughs> topic. Yeah, uh, while while you're standing over her, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I think that does make. Sense. Right, do you hear the message? I see it. I see it. Okay. <laughs> so right, make you still made roll. Throw, then. You still made roll a strength saving throw. I rolled a okay, fifteen. Okay, uh, John. Uh, Officially, it's a strength saving throw. Okay. You know me, I'm inclined to make dexterity or whatever like that, but actually, well, it's well, a strength that, saving throw. That's, that's for shoving. That's, that's pretty much like a, a, a mage hand thing, right? So... Uh, so we can do like dexterity? A, a hand off, yeah. You know, do yeah. Just, a, just a flat dexterity save then? No. No strength? We, we, both, we, we both roll sleight of hand, right? Oh, okay. That's that's what I would. John's suggest. just rolling it. John's just rolling it with his mind. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> so you would do like sleight of hand, but add your intelligence to it, maybe. Uh, no, John. John is proficient in sleight of hand. I'm just doing that. Okay. I got 14. Yeah, John got a 10. <laughs> okay. I, um. <clears throat> so Nick, the way that's gonna look is Saul's just gonna tighten his grip on it maneuver it away but it's going to be it's going to look a lot closer than it actually is if that makes sense and kind of the, keeping it very visible yeah he's keeping it visible and he's it's almost I don't know if John would pick up on it but he's like he's he's pushing it Sometimes. you almost you almost got it you're about to get it it's so close you just gotta try harder um, and I rolled a 15 on my on my stealth. Do, do I need to do sleight of hand at this point? Soul can soul notices what you're doing. I'm gonna take out my gun and aim it at you. <laughs> at me? Yeah, Havel, please do not interfere. John would probably would uh, immediately look, look pissed, and it'd be like, "That's pretty fucked up to do, Saul." After asking for a whole bunch of money to buy something. What are you gonna? Look? John, what are you going to do about it? I don't know, man. I, I guess it just makes us a little bit less friends. That's disappointing. He tosses the gold at you. It's pretty shady. You could do John, so much. You could do so much more. As the gold pouch lands in John's lap. And he walks out. Yeah. John would sigh and uh, shake his head as he uh, tucks it away. You know, I, I sometimes I wonder if you're if you're actually the most mature person, given your age. He's gone. I think that. Wait, where I, you I think John just been out the that for Yeah. What was that? I think John was probably yelling that after him as okay. he's walking out the door. <laughs> yeah, he's for your age. You know. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not engaging. He's gone. He he is going to go to find Ali though. Ali's back at home with her siblings. Okay. Guess John, uh, John would uh, pour everyone a drink. Yeah, he's gonna tell the siblings that John's paying for everyone's meal at the tavern, and then he's gonna have a heart to heart with Allie. As you walk in, Allie is sitting with her siblings, re recounting a story to them. And then, I found the biggest guy in the prison, and I just took him. Just whack, whack, whack. And the younger siblings are like, wow. As you walk in, and the story quickly fades, and the younger siblings hear what you your offer of free meals at the tavern and run. Ali snaps to Joey, the, the one below her. To, uh, sorry. Yeah, Joey, the one below her, to look after them. 
and then gives you a very serious look. Alright, well, I uh, saw this coming. What do you want, John, over? John trusts you, and he's going to trust you with someone that I don't trust you with. And there's Tell not much about, I can uh, do. Your little girlfriend? Don't you know that's a... Uh, she's a bit young for you, man. She hears a click under the table. <laughs> <laughs> she puts her elbows on the table. <laughs> We're going to leave her with you. And if anything happens to her, I'm going to kill you. Okay, Daddy. All right. He gets up and he leaves. You see her, like, looking out the door after you. And right before you leave sight, she uh, throws on a coat and starts uh, walking towards the tavern as well. Saul's going to go off on his own. I think he's done for the night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Late afternoon rolls around. The day, as it so often does in the past, is blistering hot with the sun so close above your heads in the high mountains. But then as it fades, as it does in these high mountain passes, by four o'clock the sun is gone and the long shadows of afternoon are cast over the entire va valley. What is everybody else doing besides getting drunk in the tavern? My son is not getting drunk. He, uh, he's drinking milk. Drinking milk, eating a hearty meal, and he's gonna call it a day. Uh, are you just going to sleep in one of the in like your same room in, room in the tavern? Yeah. Okay, it's good to know. The rest of you. Um, <clears throat> I go to John, and it's like, I'm like, what's Saul's deal? I don't get that. I don't get that, man. Uh, he's just a troubled old man. He's been through a lot. I've had a cushy life, having a, a whore for a mother, compared to what he's been through within the, the Inquisition. Mm. But don't, yep. don't get me wrong. My mother is a a beautiful woman and a, a lovely person but uh I, i've had to hear quips about it my whole life gotten used to it i right as a child though i class a a hand on john's shoulder it's like i'm sure your mother is a lovely person all mothers are but i don't know uh, Saul acts and operates in a very strange way. Even I don't comprehend that whole exercise with your coin. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, that bat with the bag of coin. I I don't see the intentions of it. I don't get it. I think uh, he was just trying to be funny. Well, ha. That's ha. Kind of an odd humor, but but uh, considering his upbringing, I think that's understandable. He's just coping with things in his own way, given given all that he's been through and that we're going through, and Lula in the state that that he is, that she is. He's just doing the best that he can to make light of it. That's what I think. Well, <clears throat> at the rate that whole incident was going, I don't think he's doing it in the right way. Because I don't like being having a gun pointed at me. Especially when I'm trying to trust somebody that 
I am still harboring some ill will to and in in all honesty John I am trying to trust him because I trust you I trust Lula I trust Aslan but Saul I don't know man you know that a leopard lion can't change its stripes and spots Look, it, I, might be, it might be ingrained into him so, for such a long time. Maybe he's not fully out of it. Look, I think uh, I trust that Saul is a courageous man. That he won't. He, he although he pulled the gun on you, it was it was part of the joke. And uh, even though it was kind of a, a dumb joke and definitely inappropriate to do. You know, given the seriousness of the situation. But, uh... Look, as long as we don't mess with Lula, don't put her in harm's way, he'll, he'll, be, he'll always be on our side. I think he understands that the invaders are a danger to everyone. To the ranch, to himself, and to Lula as well. He's, I look just, at you. he's just goofing around. <laughs> And it'll be fine. We, we should talk to him about pointing a gun at you. That's definitely not uh, a good thing to do. You shouldn't be doing that under any circumstances. Especially as a joke. I take my shot of uh, whatever alcohol and I look at John and I shake my, bo- my cup at him. It's like, no, Mr. Morella. Indeed, it's not a good idea. As I down it, and I get up, and as I, I'm retiring for the night. I'll see you tomorrow morning. All right. Uh, thank you for everything, Havel. And let me know if there's ever anything I can do for you. You got it. Good night, Mr. Morello. Good night. Oh, and. By the way, once we're in Bay Gates, if you ever want to ease some tensions, my mom's got some pretty good, uh, she can get us some pretty nice discounts. <laughs> As he walks you know, away. With their friends. <laughs> uh, he turns around and looks at John and he says, I'm going to take your offer on that, Mr. Morello. I could use some. Uh, I'm sure you'll be glad you did. Yes. And he walks off. Alrighty. Aslan has gone to bed. Havel has gone off to bed. Saul has gone off to him to his own uh, devices. Unless you'd like to describe more what that is. He's a bat. John, what He's do you do? He's upside down in a barn somewhere. John, what would you like to do for the evening? Um, I guess he would uh, just take a have a tranquil evening as they they wait to see if uh, Lula comes to. They'll, they'll give her a day. Um, he wouldn't have like a big feast, but he, he would have dinner served for uh, all of Ali's uh, siblings again. Um, I think he would go to the Hootens, and he would actually mm-hmm. tell uh, tell them saying, hey, if things don't work out here in the, in the past for you, you would be welcome at the, the Western Ranches over by Tenton. We got a, a thing going there. We're making something of a conglomerate of the local ranchers called the, the United Ranchers. And uh, we're pooling our resources together and trying to make a place for, for everyone there who needs a place to go people who don't cause trouble and can pull their own weight. They would uh, find a living there. Community. They they definitely seem to consider that. Why? Thank you. And then he would say the same to the um, to the saloon owner 
and to the mm -hmm. chef if he's ever around and he would say hey we we, we don't have a saloon there if you ever need any uh, uh, help getting to Tenton can uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll be able to finance your journey why thank you of course uh, and then he says, uh, you, you can write a, you can write a, a letter addressed to uh, John Morello and uh, send it to Tenton or to the Western Ranches. And then, uh, and then that'd be it. Then I guess, uh, they would retire for the evening. What does John do for the evening? Like the inky blackness oh, uh, of night slips across the valley. The stars reveal themselves, shine like beacons in darkness. So he, he would send, he would um, cast sendings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, initially, he would, yeah, he would uh, cast <laughs> many sendings, just reporting to Kryn, um, saying that uh, you know what happened that they're that they're in the, the mountain pass in that they mm -hmm. investigated the mines and found uh, a structure similar to the one in the tunnels. And... Krin is very interested in this. And uh, this seems to be some vital information to him. Yeah, and that he believes that they should destroy it as it seems to be a, a beacon that is of interest to the invaders. And that he intends to go to Baygate to purchase um to you know secret or subtly purchase or you know purchase a bunch of powder kegs and uh destroy this the artifact contained within the monument i will and see beyond. what i can do thank you okay. i'm very grateful to Varish. of course and uh then he would also he would make a sending to his mom and uh, let her know that he's uh, coming into town with his friends to to visit, and that he'll. Oh, sugar, he'll be I'm so excited! Town. I can't wait to see you. It's gonna be so great to have you. Oh, man. Twenty-five words. B. <laughs> can't wait yeah. to tell you the news of all the and all this. Many, 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 many. <laughs> story. Yeah, <laughs> like some long-winded story. And then I think I think I think it was on last Tuesday, but I couldn't tell you if it was Tuesday or Wednesday. The weather was very very be. <laughs> yeah, she's probably just still talking to herself on the other side. <laughs> yeah, John, Johnny boy, little Johnny, are you there? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's that it. Uh... The only thing that comes to mind right now. As you're making your sendings and you're glancing out into the night sky, what you notice is a small flash. Almost as if flaming ring opened across the sky. And as you see this ring explode out from the center, you notice something like a plummet. But unlike before, instead of streaking across the sky, it streaks towards you. And downward, it strikes into the mountainside where you guys were earlier. And you hear a boom. And a shake and a rattle. And it echoes off the mountains around the valley. In the distance, as you hear the whoop and the reverberations of the strike. And then in the silence, in the darkness, it almost seems as if the night takes a deep breath. And you hear the cracks of an avalanche. Um, upon seeing the, the the light across the sky, John would uh, gasp, and then he would he would leap forward and put uh, press his face to the window as he uh, uh, watches it uh, descend and strike into the mountain. And then he uh, he stumbles back as the the ground shakes, and then he runs to everyone that's uh, uh, sleeping, and he goes to shake them awake, to tell them uh, what's happened. You can find Havel and Aslan asleep in their beds. 
So I'm not so sure, but he's a bat. He's upside down. I don't know where you'll find him. He might be close by. He might not be. Who knows? Okay. Well, well, he, he would go to Aslan and Havel, and he he would uh, shake them awake, and he would say, "Get up quickly! The enemy! They're making a move. We should go see." <laughs> I uh. As soon as uh, John shakes Aslan, he's gonna like stand up and like just grab uh, John by the throat. He instinctively. And then as soon as he realizes maybe in like a, a second and a half, he's gonna drop it. It's like, oh. Sorry. Hey. Oh. Sorry. Uh. No, it's, it's okay. I, I should know better. Uh, but yeah, I saw, uh -huh. I think one of those, one of those ships with the tentacles. It's crashed into the mountain where we were. Yeah. Uh, he grabs the two battle axers that are resting by the corner. He doesn't even get the corroded armor. Shit. We should go see what they're up to. Let's go. And then uh, he goes and uh, does the same for, for Havel. No, Mom, I don't want to go to school today. And then, and then uh, he he, kind of, he gives him a some couple slaps in his cheek. Wake up, wake up! Aslan will pick him up. Uh, whoa. Okay, okay. Ship. It's crashing to the side of the mountain, back of the mines. We, we should go catch them unawares, put an end to another one of those ships. And I I will grab my my rapier and I like put my arm around um, um, as on snack and I point my rapier off we go <laughs> and I write how uh, as on as a mount do you, technically do you guys by know the rules he's a medium creature and you can only ride a large creature but for the sake of fluff I, I, I love it the image is great <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen? Have you seen Saul? Can't find him. I don't know. After that incident with the bag, uh, Mr. Morello, I I have no idea. And to be frank, I don't care. All right. So, um, all right then. Let me reach out to him. He would put a hand to the side of his head and uh, cast sending. And he would send a um, a, tel a telepathic message to Saul, wherever he might be, saying, "Did you hear that? They've crashed into the mountain over by the mines. We're heading there now to see if we we can ambush them. Will you help us?" Sure. I can see you right now. You look stupid. <laughs> 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 and uh, he'll flap down and perch on John's shoulder. <laughs> John would uh, look to him and give him a, a frown. Um, and he would say, "Very funny." And then he he would uh, start walking quickly towards the mines. You guys make your way towards the mines. But as you do, I uh, just real quick park for you. Yeah. As we're as we, we begin walking and and then after he says very funny to him, uh, and they're walking, they begin walking towards the mine, and they're all together there. He says, "By the way, speaking of funny, you pointing your gun at Havel, that was not funny, not funny at all, Saul. You need to not do that again." Is this telepathic? Can I respond to that? No, no, he's he's saying it out loud. Okay. Um, can you read his mind? Has that been established? Uh, only if he de detects. Only if he casts uh, detect thoughts. Yeah. Uh, he, then he just he just stays a bat. He seems nonplussed. He can do it at will now. 
What? Uh, he can't do it at will. He needs to spend a spell slot. Okay. And there's like components to it. I know you had telekinesis. I wasn't sure if you had telepathy. Well, well he does. You're, you're a great old yeah. one. You're a great old ones guy. So you should be able to, right? Well, he, he, he can speak telepathically, but he's, he's not doing it right now. But he can't read thoughts unless he, he casts Detect Thoughts. Like, you okay. can't speak back All to right. him telepathically. I was saying, it's been a while since I played a great old one. Lot, so gotcha. Sorry to hold it up. It's all good. It, he just looks like a bat, man. He looks as mysterious and inscrutable as a bat. Oh, oh he's, <laughs> an actual, he's an actual bat right now? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? So that, so he's a just a bat perched on John's shoulder. Yeah. Yep. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, I'm sorry, I hadn't hadn't gotten <laughs> wait, that. Wait, what? I thought he had just become Batman or something like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, he's he can turn into a bat. No, in that case, forget everything I, I've said ever since he he dropped on John's shoulder. Okay. Uh, John would definitely freak the fuck out. As soon as there's like a bat on his shoulder, he would start flailing and and kind of like he'd start doing flapping like around, around, screeching, yeah, like, like thrashing, like get it off me! What is this? Panicking, trying to latch on, scared to death. Yeah, John would try to slap him off of his shoulder. Okay, this random bat. Yeah, I think I think you just throw him against the wall, and uh, he turns back to Saul <laughs> after taking one hit point of damage. <laughs> and then we can move on from the scene. I can tell Nick's very annoyed. You guys arrive at the entrance <laughs> of the cave that you had previously found the day before. But as you approach it, what you notice is the rocks and the beams that have previously supported them have now caved in among upon themselves. And the way is blocked. I have a small little loot uh, table that I prepared for you guys to find uh, in inside the caves. I'm, uh, it's in this Word document. I'm just going to take that and delete it. Now it's gone. And you notice a malicious dark energy standing above you hovering over you. And with that, I'm going to end the, end the session. I hope everybody's enjoyed watching. I'm sorry that it's been so long since we were last here, but we promise we won't do that to you anytime soon ever again. We will see you the same place, the same time, next week. And until then, may all your roles be natural 20s, and good luck on all your future quests. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.